Hey, uh, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Friday night, June 23rd, 2023. It's about 11.01 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. Latest quake activity shows some movement up into the Alaska area. See the green ring. Also a 3.4 somewhere out here on the globe. There we go. Out in the Puerto Rico area. Uh, one of the uh, other later earthquakes here on the Earthquake 3D globe. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on here in Puerto Rico. There's that 3.4 coming in within the last hour, just north of the San Juan, Puerto Rico area, about 38 kilometers deep. This is the all magnitudes map here. So activity somewhat uh, minimal, very minimal here for the most part uh, across this area. Normally we see quite a bit of microquake activity here in this region, but uh, pretty, uh, pretty minimal movement. All right, uh, the states, we'll go ahead and jump up here to the uh, Pacific Northwest. A little scattered activity out here across Washington today. Uh, latest quake shows a 2.3 near the Lewiston Orchards, Idaho area on the Washington-Idaho border out here. Nothing big, just a little bit of movement uh, kicking off here across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, about the same for Northern California as well. We're not seeing anything major kicking off uh, in the area for now. Across the rest of California, a little spotty movement, a little swarming area uh, down here along the plate boundary those are uh, some very small microquakes but we did have a 2.8 come in earlier this morning that kind of triggered a little bit of surface activity uh, across the plate boundary here of the san andreas fault uh, further down south very minimal movement for the most part and if you didn't catch my update here on the san andreas fault little in-depth look at the plate boundary here in southern california go check it out it is up on the channel uh, Texas area seen some movement here out in the oil fields uh, well west of the Pecos Texas area mostly twos and some smaller quakes out there anything major brewing out here well nothing out along the North American plate or the South America region we are seeing some activity kick up here in a swarm fashion out in the Atlantic Ocean the northern mid-Atlantic Ridge now this is a divergent type boundary meaning the separation of the seafloor and basically what that's doing is creating some new land out here uh well at least new oceanic crust is the word land would be above water that's not the case currently out here uh, we're seeing quite a few fours and fives including a 5.6 here earlier this afternoon now this type of movement here should trigger some further stress in certain areas uh, if we look here at the plate map here this is the general direction of the gps movements of all the plates and their uh, respected areas this is the area of interest out here it looks like with um definitely a couple different divergent boundaries um taking place let me back out of here for a second see this area right here northern atlantic ocean uh, gonna be right up about here the this this area right here is a uh, divergent boundary as well but it's not specifically showing it but this this area of interest that we're seeing the activity is right about here separation of seafloor that should add some further strain in certain plates along the north american area and also around the eurasia plate and maybe uh, the uh, africa plate out here uh, in this general area so we'll keep an eye on uh, potentially some further uptick here along the Mediterranean. Right now, Mediterranean fairly minimal. 4.1 just off the coast of Greece earlier this morning. Uh, the Earthquake 3D globe here shows um, not a whole lot. Some twos and whatnot going on here across the area, but we'll keep, a, keep an eye on some increasing uh, potential movement across these areas here over the next couple days. Uh, one earthquake way up north here, 4.2 earthquake see where that's at exactly way up in china or is it russia let's see where that's at russia area southwestern siberia about 10 kilometers deep for that earthquake showing up further down south here into the indonesia islands area and the philippines got a 4.2 out here around the philippines uh, a little bit of movement up here off the coast of that's a little oddball earthquake let's see where this 4.6 was coming in here uh china area don't really see too much earthquake activity out here look at that uh, even looking at the usgs map in terms of uh historical data 
very spotty since about 1900 or so. It's well away from any major plate boundary or any type of um, major tectonic region. So this is a little odd out here of the uh, Gulf of Tonkin. Is that right? Either way, just off the coast here of the uh, China area. Uh, further up north into the Japan region, some activity earlier this morning and also got another earthquake down here in, off the coast of Japan, a 4.8, 39 kilometers deep. Been watching uh, this activity pretty closely. We've been seeing elevated movement here in the moderate range recently, but nothing, nothing major brewing on yet. I'm sure eventually that will kick up. 4.5 earlier this morning near the Volcano Islands. This is the Izu Trench area. 135 kilometers deep. All right, out here in the Tonga and Samoa area. Looks like um, one earthquake here into the Tonga region, Tonga Trench, another deep earthquake. It, you know, if you watch this channel a lot, you'll know that deep earthquake activity is, this is kind of where it all begins, so to speak. We'll, we'll watch deeper movement quakes trigger up here and depending on if there's strain up here along the Tonga Trench area further upstream, We'll watch for some larger scale activity here in this area. If not, that momentum trend, uh, tends to build here across the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea area. And that region specifically is our quiet zone for now. Uh, but we'll watch this area here in the coming hours and days for some potential larger scale movement um, regarding this activity here to the east. Notice that a wide open view of nothingness. That that means that uh, that's the area to watch. New Zealand, uh, I'm not seeing anything popping off there at all. Um, Timothy was saying that there's something going on down there in South Island. So let's uh, let's go take a look here across the South Island area. Looks like a 2.2, 3.4 North Island 10 hours ago. Um, I'd like to look at these earthquake drums because they give me a good indicator of what's going on locally uh, in the area. There is some earthquake activity showing up here across the uh, North Island Station. Now, that looks like distant earthquake activity. It was showing up here across this seismograph station. I'm talking about these signatures right here. Um, they did show up down here as well. It's possible that could be some of the activity we witnessed here over the over the past few hours. Those five pointers up further close to the Samoa area. Uh, down into that's about 12 hours ago or so. Recent activity, South Island. Um, let's see what we got down here in South Island area. Seeing a couple earthquakes showing up here across the board near the Deep Cove area. Weather Hill Road, Mavora Lakes area, a couple smaller quakes here over the last 24 hours. Nothing major going on. Uh, those definitely look like they're below the 3.0 threshold. Uh, but far as any large scale movement goes, I'm not seeing it. Definitely not seeing it yet. We'll know when it kicks up, right? We will definitely know. Uh, but six hours ago, it looks like there was a. Uh, uh, let's see, it looks like a little bit of movement there six hours ago, South Island. I'm not going to go through all of these because, as always, this is along a major plate boundary. And um, these smaller microquakes are very, very common. Um, I, I'm not even really seeing that. I see nine hours ago, 2.2. Uh, but as far as that uh, six hours ago earthquake down in South Island, I'm, I'm really not seeing it. So... We'll definitely check back. Uh, let's see what we got here. Alaska region, we're just gonna do the zigzag pattern tonight. It's zigzag, zigzag Friday night. Cook Inlet area, 3.4 in the last hour near Happy Valley, Alaska. Doesn't that sound happy out there? Beautiful, right next to a bunch of volcanoes and a major tsunami area. Uh, about 104 kilometers deep here in this region. A little bit of movement across the Trident Volcano area as well. Nothing uh, major going on there, though, for now. Um, let's look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. 
Some activity across the Middle America Trench as the last 24 hours shows there in the four range. Um, let's see what else we have. I think that's about it as far as any major movement goes. Uh, we do have another earthquake coming in here. Looks like a 3.1 into the Chile area right now. Also the green flag earthquake um, showing up there into the Peru Chile Trench. Slight, I, I would definitely say slight to moderate uptick here across the Peru Chile Trench. Not really seeing that on the USGS map, but obviously two threes and maybe some fours out there stirring up into the region of South America along that subduction zone. The uh, trimmer map here tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone shows zero. Nothing at all. And that's been... It's been, uh, if you look at the last, oh, eight months or so, we've been very minimal with trimmer activity. We did have a couple events kick up here in April um, and also during the end of May. But these were not large-scale events triggering up here along the Cascadia. So this is a, it's a very interesting study uh, to watch this trimmer uptick here because I do believe that plays a part in the next Cascadia mega quake, right? It's been 323, th 323 years since the last major earthquake there along the Cascadia. And uh, I don't know what the trimmer count was prior to that earthquake. Nobody don't, uh, actually nobody knows. And trimmer is uh, technically a newer deal um, but we had been getting much closer here. If we look at uh, about the time frame of 2020 up until about the end of last year, the trimmer intervals were getting larger and more regular. But this year, it's a little bit different. We're dropping back down into the low trimmer count. Now, what that means, uh, I'm guessing that it's going to mean less stress out here along the Cascadia. Um, but still something to watch, something new uh, in terms of uh, geology and, and seismology studying is watching this trimmer account um, with regard to the Cascadia subduction zone. Not a whole lot of activity kicking up there right now. Uh, in fact, most of the time when this thing does go, it doesn't give us any notice. It just pops. Uh, but the trimmer activity does... Uh, play a part in it, I firmly believe, far as uh, hopefully predicting the next Cascadia uh, trimmer or the Cascadia uh, mega quake out here and gives at least hopefully will give folks a heads up when it may be getting close to uh, producing a nine pointer because uh, that area right here, the Cascadia subduction zone, very, very capable of producing a 9.0, potentially greater along this major subduction zone. So we'll watch a couple areas here following this Atlantic activity. Um, you know, it does apply further stress uh, in certain regions here. Uh, but I think for the most part, we see this activity kick up around the Mediterranean. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. Space weather activity. Look at that. Almost flatlined here with very minimal sea flare activity. This is... Uh, this has been the ongoing trend. We can have 100 sunspots out here with a very minimal complex structure of these uh, regions and you know, not see any major flares. And that's kind of what's happening right now. We have numerous sunspots here on the visible disc. All of these um, are fairly stable. If I were to say anything about any sunspot to watch, um, maybe this region down here is looking somewhat active, but that will be turning away from Earth tomorrow morning. This will be much further off on the southwestern limb. Um, let's see here. Maybe this little small area here in this sunspot region, but, you know, this is kind of like a pick and choose. Which one's it going to be? Which one's going to show activity? Well, right now, nothing is. Um, look at all those sunspots here. You can see lots of sunspots here on the UV filter ray. But there's, uh, there's just nothing to write home to grandma about. Numerous peppered sunspots out here. Uh, but you can add 40 more on here. 
And if they're not complex, then uh, guess what? We're not looking at any elevated space weather activity. The aurora forecast is very minimal. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of potential here over the next few nights. And it's been that way for a little while. Uh, we'll just continue to watch all these sunspots here. They're fairly stable. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's just, it's hopefully that's not going to be the trend uh, in this solar maximum cycle here. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing quite a few X flares in the Earth direction. Uh, let's see here. Storm Prediction Center here. I don't think we got any major stuff going on right now. Current day one outlook still shows some activity up here. It looks like around the uh, Nebraska area in the South Dakota. Um, not really looking at any, any major severe weather threat. The numerical model here. Let me show you guys this outlook as we watch the Gulf down here. As I put this into motion around the first week of July. It looks as though, right there, it looks as though some tropical storm or hurricane may be venturing into the Gulf around the July 3rd time frame. Uh, this is a ways out, obviously, but it does show potential impact around the Louisiana area, right smack dab uh, around the Louisiana area, just west of New Orleans. Um, but this is all subject to change, right? But we'll continue to watch that. It is getting into that point of year where hurricanes can come in and develop. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. As uh, far as the West Coast goes, looking at uh, some cooler temperatures right now. Today's going to be right here, Thursday, Friday. There we go. Cooler temperatures out here. Still kind of chilly. Um, I think we only hit about 84 degrees today, and that's a good 15 degrees below normal. That pattern is going to stick throughout the rest of the weekend and into early next week before we get some ridging up here along the Pacific Northwest with the orange colors up here indicating some um, pressure gradients on the high side. But technically nothing big going on here, folks, as far as any major drama out here, as far as any high pressure ridges go. Uh, and that goes for, we can check out the North Pacific out here all the way into the... Um, almost the second week of July here. This blob of high pressure out here in the North Pacific is good. It needs to stay out there. Uh, occasionally, with that being in position, we can get some troughs out here along the West Coast. But if it's centered more over here, then obviously we're gonna cook. But it doesn't look like that's gonna be the pattern yet. It's been an odd year as far as weather goes. Uh, but I am not complaining about the cooler temperatures. I'm gonna slap on my sweater and my pajamas and I'm probably gonna call it a night. Um, I don't recall the last time I've ever uh, used pajamas and my sweaters in um, the end of June. <laughs> it just doesn't happen here in the Sacramento Valley. Anyone that lives here in the Sacramento Valley knows that it's pretty much um, a larger Death Valley scenario out here. Death Valley is always obviously below sea level, but it's the same type of scenario. Uh, you got Death Valley... Um, obviously below sea level, downslope winds indicating uh, that it, it heat up this area. That's why it's so hot in this region. Uh, but the Sacramento Valley and the uh, San Joaquin Valley, this whole area is pretty much just a Death Valley area in terms of that same type of setup. Uh, so yeah, it, it can cook. I've, I've seen years in the past where it's already 117 degrees here. Uh, in June, even in May. So I am not complaining. I'm very, very thankful uh, for the cooler conditions out here. Um, appreciate all the comments there on the last video as far as the San Andreas Fault goes. Uh, a lot of folks agreeing the water potential level out here uh, into the um, Salton Sea area does play a part, but that's not going to predict or that's not going to prevent the large scale earthquake that will take place in Southern California here one day. Uh, if anything, I think that will be more of a, a, an extreme jolt when that does uh, decide to go. Uh, you know, a lot of earthquakes come as a rolling, strong motion type of earthquake. Well, I think this is going to be a very violent eight-pointer uh, once that thing does decide to pop. Uh, so up here in Chico, obviously, you can see there's our valley. Um, the mountains creating um, some downslope winds here. You think cooler air would 
sink, right? Well, not in this case when it comes to valley type scenarios. The same down here in Death Valley. It's just, it's always hot for the most part uh, here in the Sacramento Valley, but we've been cooler than normal lately. So I'm, uh, I'm happy for that. Ugh. All right, folks, I'm uh, yawning. That's not a good sign here. I think it's the first time I've actually ever yawned here on the live stream. Hope everyone has a good night. Um, stay safe out there. And um, let's see here. Stand by for a second. Who do we got here in the live stream? Who do we have? J-H-O-N-J. Thanks for joining in there. Uh, appreciate it. Looks like the most recent comments in there. Uh, Lane was up in here earlier as well. Aside from that, I uh, hope everyone is having a, uh, a good night. Peace out out there, everyone. Appreciate all the comments and uh, whatnot on the video. I'm going to try to respond to everyone on the San Andreas Fault video. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go over there and check it out. Uh, did a little bit more in-depth study in there on the San Andreas Fault and the uh, potential. So We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Peace out.